Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Daily Drop-In Morning Show, where the Teach Better team is live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We are currently streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. Woof! And also, good morning, good afternoon, or whatever makes the most sense to you. If you are tuning in on the Teach Better Talk podcast, listening during a different part of your day, we really appreciate you being here. We want to wish you a wonderful Friday, so we hope you will fill up your coffee cup as we get into the daily drop-in fun, where we actually also get to highlight a fun course that came out this week. So we'll be right back. Morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Brad Hughes is in the house. Brad, how you doing? Hey, good morning, Ray. This is a great house to come into every Friday morning. I'm doing well. I'm excited to connect with you and our audience for Daily Drop-In. And as you said, whether you're listening live or later, we're glad that you're here. We'd love to see you and hear you in the comments or hear what you think about how your Friday's shaping up. You're setting up for a great weekend, we hope, and, and a great time with me and, and Ray Hewitt. How are you doing, friend? I'm doing well. Yeah. I, you know what? I feel like it's been one of those weeks that I can't decide if it feels like this week actually felt like it was two weeks long or if this week felt like it flew by. I, I think I'm going to decide maybe at the end of the show, I need to wake up a little bit more, but this feel, this felt like a strange week. How was your week overall? Yeah. I, I found Tuesday uh, a hard day and I think our school community did too. It was uh, four days off uh, for Easter and Passover weekend, mm -hmm. and then just putting the wheels back on and getting things back up and running and everyone back into routines. Uh, the vacation away is much needed and tremendously valued, but uh, our week picked up speed and we gained momentum as a staff team and as a school team, uh, and we're finishing very, very strong. How about you? Things, things good with you and uh, your household and your uh, Teach Better connections? Yeah, you know, it's so interesting. You said that I'm like, oh my gosh, Easter weekend was just last week. Like that's yeah. that's the problem. I think the week felt so long because that feels like ages ago. Yeah. I just opened up my calendar this morning, just previewing, you know, what else is going on today and what is in store next week. And it said it was still the seventh day of Passover. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my gosh, Passover is not over yet. What day is it today? I think it's Friday. <laughs> I think it's I think it's June the 11th today. I'm not sure of the exact date, but yeah, sometimes it just feels like we're in a bit of a time warp and uh, time can go fast or slow depending on how we're experiencing life. And we're hoping that there's lots of joy and lots of celebration in your life that uh, are making the days something to look forward to. It's always tricky, especially for those of you that had Monday off, which I know so many schools handle differently, but it's always tricky to figure out what, what day of the week it is. You're like, is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? That's the kind of week it felt like. I woke up this morning and I'm like, is it Saturday? Is it Tuesday? I don't even know what day it is. So happy Friday, friends. It's Friday, April 22nd, and we are thrilled that you are here. <laughs> we sure are. Um, Brad, do you have any like upcoming weekend plans that you're excited about? Hopefully get through a wonderful Friday and then maybe some family time. We have a wonderful Earth Day celebration planned at school. Uh, we also have a celebration of life uh, in memory of a dear colleague at the school uh, who lost her life uh, a year ago. And so uh, this colleague's environmental commitment and passion is going to be reflected in a wonderful uh, tribute today uh, that will bring uh, staff and students together. Uh, and in particular, this weekend is a Formula One race weekend. So we're looking forward to... Uh, enjoying the qualifying and there's going to be a sprint qualifying race it's uh, the italian grand prix race so that's uh it always means some fun and excitement in our household brad i had no idea you watched f1 because i am like addicted to the netflix show right now mm -hmm. and i want to watch the race you can watch it all weekend so typically in a formula one race ray there are uh practices and you can get to know the drivers and the drivers are working their their things out and tweaking things to get ready for the qualifying uh, the qualifying will set the race order. And in this race, Ray, in uh, the Italian Grand Prix, they have what's called a sprint race. So uh, the qualifying is for the position in a short, quick sprint race uh, tomorrow, which will determine the starting positions for the Grand Prix race on Sunday morning. So this would be a great weekend to tune in uh, if you're a Formula One fan or looking forward to getting to know the drivers or the teams or how this stuff works. It's 
It's really, really entertaining. And I find the commentary really engaging too. Love the personalities, love the technology. And it's, it's a bit like a soap opera, soap opera on wheels. I have to tell you, Brad, I am so thrilled to hear you say this. I'm going to pick your brain like crazy as we get into this because the Netflix show, for those of you who like are looking for a new show to watch, the, the Netflix show on F1 is so interesting. I love learning the backstory. It is a little bit of a, there's some drama, but oh, yeah. like I, I really feel like you get to know the inner workings of some of the most fascinating parts, uh, even just like the mechanical elements of it. Mm -hmm. do, you a, do you have a team you, you're rooting for? We really like McLaren. Uh, we, we love the McLaren team. We love the McLaren colors. And we love that they're neither the top of the heap uh, nor the bottom of the pack. And so they're, they're striving, they're hungry, they're young. And uh, the, uh, you know, all of the drivers, there, there isn't any, there aren't any drivers that we root against uh, and what is really revealing in the series and, and, and really how it's reflected too in, in the live commentary or the live, whatever it is, the, the coverage of, of the actual races is, is these drivers are pulling for each other as well. I mean, you're, you're talking about rocketing around a, a racetrack and there, there's, there's imminent danger at every turn. So, and you're, you're looking to uh, improve yourself as an athlete, as, as a driver, as a team member, there's, there's lots of intrigue. And like you said, there's, there's lots of personal and professional drama uh, that draws people to view, but uh, it is certainly entertaining. So we're going to be cheering for team McLaren. Uh, we love how Team Ferrari has come out of the uh, come out of the gates this year, uh, and you can never never discount those Red Bulls. They're hungry too, and Mercedes is coming up too. Uh, Mercedes and Red Bull were neck and neck for the World Championship last year, so lots to look forward to, Ray, as uh, this F1 season continues. I think it's so fascinating. I'm so excited to add this to the list of things I need to pick your brain about. I have no idea you're interested in this, and this is a new discovery I feel like I've had over the last few weeks. So if any of you are looking for a little bit of a new hobby, a new challenge, I feel like there's so many things to learn about with F1. So I'm a huge fan. Good morning to everybody in the comments. A special shout out I got to give to Adam. Uh, Adam is in Atlanta getting some professional development at the Ron Clark Academy. Uh, and we really appreciate you being over there, being a learner, and also saying hi to our friends. We are we are big uh, Kim Bearden fans here in the Teach Better family. So she's been wonderful to us and has done a lot of, you know, PD with our team. So uh, shout out to that crew over there. Something I really admire about Adam, too, is I can't help but think that his he uh, is preparing for a new administrative role. Uh, he is digging deeply into this professional learning in Atlanta with intention. And Adam, we want to wish you the very best uh, in your new endeavors and your new digs, your new school, your new sc school community is very, very fortunate to have you. And uh, we wish you a wonderful time of learning and energizing and you'll take that energy and commitment right back to your school community. I'm sure of it. I love it. We love also Rachel's been in the comments. Good morning, Dan, listening in from the UK. And then we have our one and only Brienne Fennell. I'm so excited. Hey, Brie, good to see you. We always count on Brie for the green hearts. We appreciate that, Brie. Yeah, she's actually, Brad, she's running our, we have an internal meeting tonight or an internal mm -hmm. hangout tonight, and Bree's taking the lead. I love seeing Bree step up for leadership roles, and she's just such a wonderful educator that brings such a beautiful lens to everything she works on, so, so excited for her. She sure does. There, there are incredible people working within our team and within every school that the Teach Better team uh, encounters or touches, and this is what really brings me so much joy is connecting with heart-led people, doing strong work, learning through practice, and, and really just striving to be a little bit better every day. This is what it's all about. I love it. Brad, speaking of internal team, you had a big week this week internally on the team because you released your first course in our Teach Better Academy. And I'm going to say I sure did. And I want to, I want to be clear. We sure did, Ray. It was your partnership uh, and your, um, your vision that guided me through this course creation process, uh, start now to finish better intentional shifts to end the year strong. So I'm really privileged to be a course creator, a course co-creator now and a, a course developer. And I look forward to building on this strong foundation. And, and I hope that uh, folks consider checking out our course, especially as we look forward to the last four to six to eight weeks of the school year. It's, it's always an opportune time to reflect on where you've been and set some intentions to stay grounded. And one of the real great takeaways I love from our course, Ray, which I think we just we just found our way, it's funny, we found our way to this, was this idea of course correction. So we, we all have a direction, we all have a path that we envision towards the end of the school year. And I think where we where we landed 
was this idea of small shifts. And I think you said just like puffs of air, like puffs of air, like a like a lunar lander might make tiny course corrections. That was a real cool moment that we kind of discovered as we were creating it. And uh, anyway, very excited to confirm that that course is available in the Teach Better Academy. And again, Ray, uh, very grateful to you for the opportunity. No, I'm so thrilled. We've already had some people take the course. We've already gotten some emails with questions and commentary on the experience of making those small adaptations to end the year strong. And I'm really excited to hear everyone's thoughts. So if you're interested in exploring it further, it is over at teachbetteracademy.com. If you can sign into our academy, even if you're not a member, you there's so many free courses there. So um, whether you choose to be a member by paying $9 a month, kind of like Netflix, or you choose to um, just be a learner through the free courses. We really love being able to just put some great content there to dive into some topics. And Brad, I think this course was just such wonderful timing to give us a little boost of energy, a little boost of perspective as we end the year strong. I love the I love the four pillars we're able to highlight. So I'm just excited for people to take those into consideration. Me too. And I love that we hope that there's learning that's not just applicable to the end of the year, but foundational in our approach to education, specifically around the idea of energy management, mm -hmm. all of the things that we're facing and all of the things that we're trying to navigate, both planned events and unplanned spontaneous things that just have to be taken care of. It all demands energy. And so if we face any system or face any process that is likely to result in change or stress, uh, the necessary ability for us to shift our energies to make sure that things are in balance. I really hope that this learning is foundational for everyone in all aspects of educational and also personal life. You know, being intentional about being aware of energy management uh, and just being aware that when your energy is being depleted, when energy is low and stress is high, it's time to just pause and take a rethink and maybe maybe rally others to the cause so you can distribute the workload. So lots of learning there, right? Yeah, so I have two things I want to note. One is I really appreciate that we decided to do this course from both a teacher and administrator perspective. So regardless of who you are in the school ecosystem, I really do feel like we intentionally tried to ensure that you are able to take this information and apply it to whatever role that you have. So as you're thinking through if this course might be a good fit for you, trust me, if you are in education, it will apply to your skills, whether you are uh, a teacher's assistant in the classroom full time, a coach, an administrator, kind of everything in between. The other thing I want to ask Brad specifically to you is this was your first course experience and you are so involved in the Teach Better team and a lot of different areas of our crew. But being involved in the academy was new for you. What was it, the experience like, first off, being being asked to kind of create your own course in the academy, developing your idea, but then you had to film it, putting it into action. And then, I mean, gosh, it kind of like all came together. And how, what was that like for you? Oh, it was exciting. Uh, it was a, a really pleasant roller coaster. And I had a fantastic guide on the side, Ray Hewitt. So uh, Ray expertly guided me through the whole process of creation. Uh, and I also want to say a great big thank you to Andrea Kalkbrenner, who uh, on the internal side has developed a just an incredible structure to keep the whole team focused from one task to the other, which I think just really reflects what we try to do as a team. But I think what all educators are trying to do is is use a process to manage change and, and re re recall that everything we do is a creative act. And so when I got the invitation to create the course, the, the first reaction was, yeah, fantastic. I, I would love that. How do we do that? And so, you know, Ray Heward, Andrew Kulchbrenner guided me through the process. We, I got to use some new uh, software tools to do the recording. Um, the other thing that was awesome, Ray, was was sort of the creative workarounds that we found because as we were uh, uh, as we were recording the components together at a distance, uh, we had to do some creative problem solving around how to make that work and effective. And then, huge thanks again to Jeff Gargas who took all of our video uh, and wove it together into a beautiful and seamless. Uh, series of episodes. So it was an awesome learning opportunity for me. And now thanks to everybody's support through the team, I've got the foundation to continue to grow as a, as a course developer and presenter and look forward to the next one. Oh, that's so exciting. I loved being able to to walk you through that, that process that honestly, Andrea has done such a wonderful mm -hmm. job making sure, but it is a machine when you get in there, yeah. right? I mean, 
we're talking about uh, and Andrea is phenomenal at making sure that you get every single piece done, but you had Jeff Gargas involved, like you noted, Dave Schmidow was involved. We had uh, Carrie and Livia involved in our editing mm -hmm. team. There's just so many people that are able, Rachel, shout out to Rachel in our marketing department, creating how that was going to roll out. Just so many people that have little expertise that we're able to add to putting this course together. So I thought it was wonderful, Brad. I'm so excited for people to check that out. And like we mentioned, it's so easy to go snag over at teachbetteracademy.com. So as you, as you explore the course, there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of action steps that we, that we encourage you to take. And some of which is to then share your responses, share your experiences back with us. So mm -hmm. very excited to continue to hear about people's experiences thus far. But I just really appreciate you, Brad. I'm so excited that we were able to get this out this week. I truly appreciate that. It really does reflect the power of team, like everyone working in their own way uh, to leverage expertise, to make something that's going to be inviting and appealing and, and value added. And it also reminds me of, you know, a, a leadership, just sort of a leadership maxim is, change requires pressure plus support, positive pressure. So the internal accountability process that Andrea manages to keep everyone on track, but it's, it's all the support. It's, it's, it, it, there, it's constantly, can I help with this? Do you need any advice? Like just shoot me a message or a met, like it's, it's incredible. So the pressure plus support to make things happen is truly remarkable. So do you think an element of this course creation maybe can go into our moment of gratitude this morning? Oh, 100%. All right. What are we thinking, Brad? I'm going to document this moment of gratitude. We like to do this every single morning on the show yeah. using a Happy Feed app, which I know so many of you obviously know that we do every single morning. What are we thinking for our moment of gratitude? Well, I've. it's easy for me uh, to reflect on the power of team. Uh, and this is what I've been reflecting on as uh, our school team at Alpine Public School continues to navigate the week and also reflecting on the course creation. Uh, it's the power of team. It's the power of working together to make good things happen and to rally around each other uh, when there are setbacks or snags uh, and just <laughs> finding laughter and finding the opportunities for fun along the way. I, I, I found all of them in my school community this week, as well as through the course creation process, right? Mm, so good. We'll be right back with some good news and some holidays. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, April 22nd. As we get into this morning's show, Brad, I know that we love to bring some good news and some holiday celebration to our community. What good news story do you have for us this morning? Ray, I've got to throw it back to you for a second to ask you to pick either or. So I've got two stories queued up for Earth Day. One is bloom where you're planted. And the second is here comes the sun. Which one speaks to you? Definitely you planted comes, or here comes the sun. Definitely here comes the sun. That's my karaoke song. I could totally jam out to that one. I feel like already I feel inspired to sing at the moment. So please take it. I love it. You, you got it. So uh, in honor of Earth Day, uh, Good News Network brings you this story about a radical solar breakthrough that allows energy from the sun to be stored for up to 18 years. So, Ray, as we talk about opportunities to shift our practices to alternative energy sources, to renewable energy sources. Uh, it says that a pair of Swedish scientists has designed a microchip that stores solar energy in liquid and then converts it three months later to, to energy. So it's a, it's a solar cell that stores, it's shippable, it's transportable from one region to another. Uh, and thanks to this technology, energy from the sun can be later converted into electricity at a, at a different time and in a different place. I think that's fascinating. I love these good news uh, networks, the good news network specifically, but these good news hubs, so much of it is about innovative technology. I think this is such a wonderful thing to reflect on. That's incredible. It's only in its beginning stages now, Ray. So they've only been able to generate, transport, and then transform a small amount of, of energy. But uh, the practice is really promising, say, scientists. And when we think about intentional shifts in our practices to both generate, store, and transform energy in all of its forms, uh, this could be an important breakthrough indeed. So I'm going to put the link to this story, uh, this radical solar breakthrough. Sunny times are ahead. 
here comes the sun and Ray, if, if you want to, you know, as I put the link in the, in the chat, if you want to, if you want to uh, share a few strains of here comes the sun, your karaoke song, you could do that. You know, I see Jody McNally again in the comments and I think if I start singing, then she is going to just burst through the comments and appear on screen. So I, I think I'm going to hold back right now, but I, but I will say shout out to all of you that get to see some sunshine, whether it be today or hopefully this weekend. Uh, it was a beautiful day in my community yesterday, and I just love celebrating a little bit of sunshine. So let's add it into our day today. That's awesome. There's some incredible holidays today that can emphasize the wonderful elements of sunshine. One of which you mentioned is obviously Earth Day. So hopefully a lot of school communities are able to celebrate um, the wonderful you know world that we live on, Earth Day being a a, a wonderful thing. It's also National Jelly Bean Day. So I feel like today as you're celebrating our incredible planet, you can also pop a few jelly beans and enjoy the sweet goodness of that treat. Are you a jelly bean fan, Brad? 100%. Uh, jelly, bees, jelly beans and specifically jelly bellies are uh, one of our uh, winter holiday traditions. So we often get a big assorted bag and we eat them one by one or we pop them together and make a, a taste treat at Flavor combo, Ray. So do you have a favorite jelly bean flavor? Do you have a go-to? You know, I, I think when I ate jelly beans frequently, you ob I obviously would like pick out the ones that I love. I cannot tell you the last time I had a jelly bean. Okay. I think I'm willing to have any jelly bean at any point in time right now. If somebody handed me like a nice little bag of jelly beans, I think I eat it all without even looking at the color. So I'm, I, I'm I think today would be an ideal day for you to treat yourself to some jelly beans. Exactly. I will say it's also some wonderful holidays that are important to our communities. So something to be aware of, also something to learn more about and celebrate as you continue throughout your day. It is a good Friday for our Orthodox community. So something mm -hmm. to consider as you continue to head into the school day and engage with members of our community, thinking through those that might be celebrating a special holiday today. It's also still Passover for our Jewish community and Obviously, Ramadan is something that is continuously happening during this time. So keep that in mind as you walk through your communities and celebrate in the wonderful things going on in different cultures and ethnicities. Last but not least, it's also a very important day, a day of silence. This is a campaign to shed light on um, our LGBTQ communities. So as you walk into your experiences today, not only celebrating the incredible planet we live on, but many of the people on this planet will be acknowledging special days that are important to them or or, or um, being a part of those moments of acknowledgement. So something to consider as you walk into your morning. As I was reflecting on Earth Day this morning, Ray, I was thinking about, and we talked about in the Good News Story, intentional shifts about things like energy management or energy generation or you know reduce reuse recycle but ray you frequently use the word ecosystem to describe an education community or any community and i really think one of you know the aspects of earth day that i'd like to carry forward and and just really highlight for our students and maybe even our teach better community is, is the importance of kindness i mean our, our ecosystem in terms of our planet uh is it's in, it's intimately interwoven with us as humans that, that occupy the planet, the billions and billions of us. And um, w w the kindness, I think, is going to be a it's something that is foundational. It's something that is generational. Um, and I, I really think that kindness, human to human kindness is part of the ecosystem that we can celebrate and nurture on Earth Day. And we can make kindness happen in, in how we care for the earth. But, you know, in your last uh, in your last holiday, you know, celebrating and honoring the differences and celebrating and expressing kindness to everyone at every opportunity, I think is an important uh, gift to the earth as we celebrate Earth Day. Mm, wonderful reminder. I could not agree more. Such a wonderful way to enter into a Friday as well. Striving to be a little more kind today than maybe you chose to be yesterday. And putting that wonderful good energy into the world. It is Friday, April 22nd. We'll be right back here for Brain Break. And then don't forget, we'll also be highlighting what's coming later this week or later next week with our incredible guests and a few familiar hosts that you'll be excited to see as well. So we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, friends, it's brainstorm bank time. This is where we get to take a moment and ask anyone who is live with us or has direct messaged us personally 
to ask if you need anything. We really want to be here to be a brainstorm partner with you. And we had a weekly theme this week that was all about refreshing our routines. So before we get into recapping the week, Brad, what are your thoughts on as we kind of close out April in some regard? I know we have a few more days left. It's still about a week left of April, but it almost feels like it's May already. What routines do we need to kind of do a gut check on and make sure that we're putting our best foot forward as we end the year strong? I think, Ray, it's just about, you know, moving step by step and recognizing any setbacks or any snags that we hit as opportunities to learn and refine. I, I want to say that proceeding gently with change allows mm -hmm. others to be invited into change. So, you know, change or improvement or a, a process of refreshing is, is really something that we want to happen with people and not to people. And so when we can honor the struggles and we can honor the progress that that anyone is, is, is attempting to make in sort of a refresh process, you know, my encouragement and my invitation is to proceed gently uh, and to proceed with a sense of curiosity, creation and humor as we try to refresh or restore or bring people back to a, come back to course correction rate, bringing people back to the center of a path where uh, kindness, generosity, service and learning and community is is part of how we approach, especially the end of the school year. What's top of mind for you in terms of this idea of refresh? You know, it's interesting. I, I think if you would ask me a few days ago, I've had different kind of experiences talking about this theme all week, which I know we'll get to some recap conversation. But this morning, I'm really thinking about the fact that later today, in a few hours, I'm going to be working with a school district that I'm actually partnering with Dave Schmidt on. So Dave and I will be virtually working with a staff this, this afternoon, and we're looking to refresh and recalibrate their understanding and perspective of student ownership and learning and student mm -hmm. goal setting and reflection through that process. So we're spending, you know, about a, you know, a 90 minute period working with their teams to not only discuss the importance of students taking ownership and experiences and being able to goal set and reflect on those experiences, but more importantly for me personally, more like how to implement that. Like how do you not just talk about this idea? How do you actually make a plan? put it into action and see some outcomes um, for having students take that step and, and set goals for themselves, reflect on their goals and actually make that a sustainable and valuable experience. And so I'm thinking about refreshing some routines. To me, I think it has a lot to do this morning with how are you allowing students to take that kind of like ownership in the experience and how do you sustain that not only throughout today, but then next week and into future weeks, kind of ending the year strong. So that's really what I went to, but maybe I'm just uh, over planning for the fun that we have planned late this afternoon. Ray, I'm curious how you and Dave approach professional learning with, with a group like the district in a way that doesn't leave them feeling you're doing it wrong, do it this way. Instead, how are you intentional about honoring where they are and that they're doing great things and there are possibilities to enhance what they're doing while honoring the journey they've been on. How, how do you counter that risk? Yeah, you know, I think it's so important to, to understand that anytime we work with any teacher, whether it be a quick Zoom call, just talking shop or a formal training, kind of like we're doing today, we, we intentionally named ourselves the Teach Better team. It doesn't mean that you need to teach perfectly. It doesn't mean that what you're doing right now is done is not done well. We just always strive to be a little bit better than we, you know, every single day. And so um, with this staff specifically, I know the principal has been in really wonderful discussion with Dr. Dave Schmidto and talking about the fact that he just wants to expose teachers to different avenues. And if it's the right fit, great. They'll run with that concept or idea. If it's not the right fit, then hopefully they'll get some good reflection and move on with their day moving forward. But, you know, today is really about some deep reflection. We're starting with a fun activity uh, that has to do with your power going out in the middle of July. And wow. if you only have, you know, one thing to grab, what is that? Why do you grab that one item? And um, kind of like little reflective moments about our personal choices that we make. And then trying to connect those choices to how we can offer some choice for our student body, not just in the work that they do, but in the way that they approach the work. So I think it'll be wonderful to kind of 
dive into the types of choices we can offer students, whether it be content related or maybe even personality or characteristic related. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get some activity and discussion because for me, it's not necessarily about hoping at the end, every single teacher walks away and says, you know, for the last five minutes of class from now on, all of my students will goal set and reflect. But more so at the end of the day, is there an opportunity for a teacher to say, yeah, I think I'm a little bit better gaining a little bit more perspective on this topic. And what I choose to do with that is only going to be because it's the best fit for me and my kiddos. So I'm excited to work with this crew. I, I'm so excited too. And, and that approach better and better together is key. Uh, I think when there's important work to be done, uh, whether it's within a school building or a classroom or a district, uh, the risk the risk for the audience receiving the advice or support is always it, the risk is that something needs to change and it needs to change now. And certainly there are aspects of uh, of lots of community life and school life where that urgency is necessary and required. But let's go back to pressure plus support. And it sounds like you're looking to forward to digging in and meeting that district exactly where they are and helping those participants, you know, picture in their minds, maybe even the one child, the one student that this learning is going to make a difference for. Uh, and we think about universal design. If it's, if it's essential for that student, it's most likely good for everybody. So I wish you and Dr. Dave the very best with that. Sounds really exciting. No, it should be great. And I mean, with routine specifically, the way that we're presenting this content is through a lens of incorporating it into your daily routine. Mm -hmm. It'll be a really great fit, but I think there's an element of professional development we miss sometimes. It's not always about the content being implemented, right? Like professional development is not always about here's the topic, please work with this topic, incorporate this topic, and it will make you a better teacher. Sometimes it's the process, right? Even mm -hmm. if you don't necessarily implement the topic, the process of reflecting on the topic or the process of engaging with your peers through that topic can always make us better. So this group specifically is going to be meeting in their grade level groups when we when we get to work with them. And our hope is to just get those grade level groups talking, engaging, mm -hmm. reflecting with each other, making some funny choices together as we throw some random activities at them. And, you know, professional development should be fun. So even if they walk away just in a little bit brighter of a mood on a Friday afternoon, getting some professional development, thinking differently about how they might choose to engage with one another, much less their students. I think that's a win. It's a win. Reminds me of what Chad Ostrowski uh, talks about as a, a million conversations about nothing. Yep. So, you know, the, the ecosystem of professional learning or of any school community is built on relationships. And so you're, you're, you're building those opportunities for, routine communication and coming together to be fun, regular, supported, intentional. And you're right, right. It all all begins with those relationships. So if that district leaves your learning today a little bit more connected, uh, maybe that's exactly what is is needed and is optimal at this time for them as they continue their learning journey. Love that. Love it. I think we should recap the week, though, because there was a lot of routine suggestions that we were able to bring in with our guests. And then we can also preview what's coming next week. Does that sound good? Sounds great. You know, this is my favorite song, friends. This, this is the moment. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for jumping into our Daily Drop-In Morning Show. We're thrilled that you have been a part of our conversation, whether you're listening to this after the fact on Teach Better Talk podcast, or you're participating here live in the comments, we just want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful Friday. Brad, I think it's time to recap this week because not everyone was able to tune in to every single day of the daily drop-in. So let's give them a boost on what they should go expect from every single show. Are you ready? Ready to go. It's like the Reader's Digest of the daily drop-in. Just just uh, clear, concise, wrapping it up the week. It's uh, Let's dig into it. So no surprise to anybody here that Monday was full of shenanigans with Jeff Gargas. <laughs> no surprise there, but always fun to tune into Monday mornings because we're able to discuss a number of different things with Jeff kind of get the week started. So that's always a recommendation I have in terms of heading back and listening to another episode. On Tuesday, though, we were joined by a incredible educator, maybe one of my top 10 favorite educators, to be honest, mm -hmm. which I know I say, and I'm going to get scolded in, in, in the DMs with our friends here. But 
Thomas C. Murray was able to join us Tuesday morning. And while it does feel like that interview was about a year ago um, because of this week, I love any time Thomas C. Murray is a part of our Teach Better community. Uh, warm, engaging, uh, kid-focused, uh, and, and just like your district leadership or your district uh, learning today, focused on better, but working person to person mm -hmm. to share the joy and to share the excitement of uh, learning together. Great guy. Yes. He is one of my favorite educators to consume his content. He is yep. constantly sharing out very actionable steps, not only mm -hmm. for our teacher community, but also for our leadership community. He's a yep. wonderful resource if you're not already connected to him. And he was very dedicated to sharing a lot of different suggestions for routines to refresh your practice. So he's definitely somebody, if you're not following him, to make sure you add that to the list. And for those of you who have read our uh, the Teach Better book, he actually wrote the foreword for that book. Mm -hmm. So he shares a lot of wonderful stories and always great to have him on the show. On Wednesday, we had Dan Krinas with us and yep. he's an active member of our, our mastermind community. It was fun to be able to have him share his insight, not only as a formal e for, former ELA teacher, but also as a current administrator. Uh, I reached out to Dr. Dan as my podcast, the Good News Brad News podcast was up and running. And he met with me and took probably 45 minutes to, to an hour to help me tweak some of the sound settings so things were easy on people's ears. And and he's someone that uh, dedicates so much of his time to to better, uh, in bettering himself and what he can, what he produces and his connections and that 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 kindness of that that time and that intentional time to help me be better uh, is something I'll always remember and be grateful for uh, for Dr. Dan. Great guest. Maria was on the show on mm -hmm. Thursday, and I have to tell you, Brad, we had a ball. Like yep. there were so many different elements of our discussion that I would love to highlight. But Maria is an incredible educator that was on spring break and choosing to to uh, tune in for the show. She not only shared so much insight from her leadership role, but really wonderful perspectives on how to start your day. And to be honest, um, one of our major takeaways, I've gotten a lot of messages about it from our community here, was her suggestion on thinking through every situation, good or bad, as a resume builder, trying to gain that perspective of celebrating the opportunities that we have, good or bad, to understand that they develop us better as educators. So wonderful to interview Maria. It was, a, it was an incredible highlight of my week. And uh, definitely somebody to also connect with in uh, multiple different social media platforms. So lots to celebrate. Uh, philosopher uh, Pema Chaudron uh, reminds us, and I've got this quotation on my office, just to paraphrase that difficulty will transform us. Uh, just We just have to be not afraid of running away from it. So mm -hmm. if, if we're willing to engage with difficulty, uh, it's transformative, but it can be painful. It can be frustrating. It can evoke fear. And, you know, as Maria, you know, reminded us, you know, working through those positives and also those setbacks uh, were changed through the experience. And I, I've come to know Maria as a very, very strong, dedicated school leader, uh, mastermind mentor, and just uh, a very giving uh, educator. So I'm glad they had the opportunity to dig in with her on Thursday. So good. Next week is going to be a little bit of a strange week on the show. So I want to give you a little heads up. I actually think it's going to be a phenomenal week and I'll be tuning in just like all of you in the comments every single morning. We not only will start, obviously, our Monday morning with Jeff Gargas and I kicking off the conversation, but then Dave Schmidow is taking lead almost all week long. Yeah. And we have some incredible guests that Dave will be interviewing and getting to have some um, you know, support and, and conversation with. First off, on Tuesday, Eric Youngman is joining our show. Eric is an incredible school leader in our Illinois uh, area. And I say, I apologize, he's a district leader. I th believe that he's the director of curriculum instruction or an assistant superintendent. He's over in Libertyville, but he again is a very active member in our mastermind community, always lending his perspective. And he's written a few books. So I think him and Dave are going to geek out a little bit on Tuesday. <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> On a Wednesday, uh, we have John uh, Alsh joining us also with Dr. Dave Schmidow. Mm -hmm. John is an incredible educator that we get to work with here with the Teach Better team. He works with one of our schools. He's an incredible teacher. He uses the grid method. There's going to be a lot to, to dive in for that as well. Mm -hmm. And then we have the one and only Don Harris is joining us. And Dave will be able to talk to Don uh, about all the things she has going on in her world, which 
that will be a that will be a show I will not miss. I can't wait to reconnect with Dawn. It's been it's been a minute. That's awesome. Ages, I know. Yep. And but you know that anything with Dawn is going to be wonderful. Yep. And then you know, spoiler alert, Brad, you get to go live with the one and only Dave Schmidt on Friday. So I'm sad to not be here with you, but thrilled that Dave will be still in the show next week. Me too. Always a pleasure to partner with you, Ray, and with Dr. Dave Schmidt. And we'll do our best to to live up to the the high standards of love, caring, and shenanigans that the Friday drop in has has come to mean. Ray, we'll do we'll do what we can. I I believe in you. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> if you need anything uh, from us, please let us know. I will be with Jeff Gargas and Katie Miglin next week in Palm Springs, working with the Bar Center. If you guys are not familiar with the Bar Center, uh, we definitely encourage you to go check out. The incredible work being done there. We've had Hannah, their um, director of marketing, and Angela, their CEO and co-founder, a part of the Teach Better community for a while now. But B-A-R-R, it's an incredible nonprofit who is uh, w- having a conference next week, and they are very eager to highlight the work being done from the Teach Better community over with the Bar Center. So thrilled to be able to spend the week with them and their school districts with uh, the work that they're doing with SEL and support in our schools, social and emotional learning. And uh, hopefully be able to layer on top some instructional practices and discussion with the Teach Better team in partnership. So if uh, if any of you are interested or in the Palm Springs area, we'd love to see you. Can we bring you in live for any of our daily drop-ins just for a burst of California? I think that might be really inspiring. You know, I think it might be too. Here's the only thing, Brad. It's West Coast. So do you know what time that would be for me in the morning? I mean, it would just be an early. Uh, can I like pop in in the afternoon sometime, do you think? Well, you can listen to us and enjoy us live or later. So I'm going to say make it later. I might make it later. I mean, I love a good, you know, appearance. I don't want to to step on Dave Schmidt's toes as he has some epic daily dropping going on. But I will definitely be listening, maybe from the comfort of my bed, uh, participating live in the comments. And then for sure, we will be all over social media when we're at that conference next week. So lots, lots of opportunity to. What a cool opportunity for you and Jeff, not only to. Uh, to share and, and give of your knowledge and inspiration. But, you know, those conferences are, are so connective. And, and I know that you'll return feeling and stored both by the sunshine and the sea breezes, but also, you know, the positive energy of tons of educators coming together. What an awesome time. I wish you the very best. You know, Brad, I'm sure we will be talking about you, especially on Thursday. We have a big community that we'll be working with on Thursday morning. We ordered about a thousand corks that we'll be passing out to our audience and doing some activities with. So I'm just saying there might be some shenanigans going on over there as well as what you'll be doing on the daily drop in on Friday morning. Oh, fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Always ready to pop open a bottle to celebrate, whether it's uh, in person or virtually, Ray, just keep me in mind. Yeah. Keep your eyes out. If any of you are, are interested, we'll be doing some cool stuff on Thursday. But <laughs> Brad, so thank you so much for coming live. It's so fun on Friday to be able to catch yeah. up and say hello to our community want to wish everybody a wonderful Friday. And of course, if you need anything, please feel free to reach out. Don't forget that Monday morning, we are announcing our final speaker in our Teach Better Conference lineup before we close proposals and hopefully accept many of you as our next speakers in our lineup. We'll be announcing our Saturday morning keynote on Monday. So get excited for that news. Brad, thank you again for all the work that you do, your incredible course, and I will see you next week. Always a pleasure. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Ray, safe travels, and I look forward to reconnecting with you in two weeks. Have a great day. Happy Friday, friends.